Now, um, let's talk to Brendan Clark-Smith. He's Cabinet Office Minister and Conservative MP for Bassett Law. Um, Brendan, very good evening to you. Now, um, a, a lot of talk today about the triple lock for pensioners. Um, the BBC are reporting that Liz Truss is going to ditch it. Um, can you enlighten us on this? Yeah, th thanks for having me on, Ian. I've, I've just been discussing this, and I, I think it's a real shame that you know pen pensioners are being worried unnecessarily. If you see what the Chancellor has actually said, he said he wants to look at spending in every single department and not taking anything off the table. Um, I think then what has happened is people are picking out individual policies, whether it's the triple lock or saying after six months, you're suddenly going to have a £5,000 energy bill. And uh, I think people are maybe freestyling a little bit and going too far. I think if the Chancellor hadn't said we're going to look at every single area then uh, and had started picking little individual policies out and people would be saying, well, what about this one and what about this one? So I, I don't think they have to uh, really worry about that. I think we should wait until the 31st of October. And I, I do think this has been blown out of proportion a little bit in. Well, you say you don't think people should worry about it. Can you guarantee that the triple lock will stay for pensioners who are listening to this programme right now? Well, I'm not the Chancellor of the Exchequer, so obviously uh, I don't want to be treading on anybody's toes with this. Uh, of course, it, it, it was something that we, we put in our manifesto. We did change that again for the year because of COVID, and we did have that argument about the statistical anomalies caused by furlough. And the main point is, of course, we want to, uh, we want to help the vulnerable, but we also want to make sure that people can afford the cost of living, and triple lock is just one of those ways that we're doing that. Um, again, you know, I th I'm sure you'll, you'll no doubt have people being drawn on the question of what they believe in the triple lock is now and whether we should keep it and going forward and all of these things but really all this comes from is the chancellor saying that he's going to look at all the policies across the board and i think every department whatever it is has a responsibility to make sure they're spending taxpayers money properly make sure they're making savings and it's by doing that that we get to pay for things like the triple lock do manifesto commitments not count for anything in the conservative party now because i mean in the next election you might as well not have one well, the Prime Minister says she's committed to that 2019 manifesto and the promises that are there. And she's actually, as you said, you know, she's gone to speak to the ERG, she's gone to speak to the One Nation group. And as far as I'm aware, both of those meetings have gone very well. I think certainly um, the last day or two, I, I like to think that things have calmed down a little bit in terms of um, you know, what, what has been going out there. Um, certainly for me, the Prime Minister is the right person to take us forward. I, I think the appointment of the Chancellor as well, the market's seem to like that and and he's put his plan forward at the end of but, october to hopefully give a, a bigger idea of what we're going to be doing going forward but part of the job of being prime minister is to be able to explain to the electorate what you're doing and why you're doing it she seems singularly incapable of doing that and we've now reached a pretty pass when her popularity is less than prince andrew's there's no coming back from that is there well, it is midterm, Ian, and you, you do get unpopular She's policies. been in power for six weeks. But we're also, we've been in government for a long time now as well, let's remember. Uh, some people say we've been in government for 12 years. OK, I mean, with minority governments and, and coalitions and things, it's not quite that. But at the same time, this is the time you make those unpopular decisions. You, you can't always be popular. You remember when we came in in 2010, we had to make some very, very difficult decisions there because of the mess that we inherited there. So it's about, are you going to do the responsible thing or do the popular thing? And Prime Minister has admitted that she's got some things wrong. She's trying to be pragmatic here with what she's doing. Um, again, it's about settling the markets, making sure that people can pay their mortgages, their energy bills. But the bills. fact is, the fact is, the markets wouldn't need to be settled had she and her appointed Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, not made the most disastrous budget in the history of this country and i don't think that's an exaggeration and the 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 point is that people listening to this program are now living with the consequences of that where their mortgage payments are going to be hundreds of pounds a month more than they needed to have been because of the action of your prime minister and your chancellor and yet there seems to be very little contrition from anyone in government about the fact that they got it so catastrophically wrong well, interest rates are responsibility of the Bank of England. I think you could have a, another argument about what interest rates are or what they should have been or what they maybe should have been before. I think if you look abroad, certainly at the rate of inflation of, of other European countries, what's going on in the United States at the moment, the, this is very much a global phenomenon. And I think if we're maybe kidding ourselves, if we didn't think that 
the aftermath of COVID-19 or what's happening in Ukraine at the moment and the effect that that's having. Is it going to catch up with even us, however well, yeah. well you, you I mean, plan all the of the, you're, you're right. All of those things have to be taken into account. But you have to admit, had Kwasi Kwarteng not made that speech, we would not be having this conversation. Liz Truss's position wouldn't be in jeopardy. People wouldn't be facing extra mortgage payments every month. And people wouldn't be feeling rather anxious about what, what's lying ahead. And we're now in a position where all of that has been reversed by a new Chancellor, who is effectively the new Prime Minister. Is he not? No, I don't think that's fair, Ian. But also what I'd say is, I mean, Liz Truss, when she was in the, the leadership election, a lot of these policies were announced a good month or so in advance. They weren't suddenly dropped on the markets. So I guess some of the things, the uh, the 45p tax rate, OK, I, th I think you can make a fair argument there that there was maybe too much coming out in one go. I think that may be uh, distracted from some of the, the better parts of the plan, such as the the uh, energy bills that are what we're doing to help people with that. The national insurance contribution cut, that is still there, of course. That's £330 extra uh, for 28 odd million people. So there's still plenty of good things there. Um, again, you look you look at the Chancellor. Why wouldn't you want to bring somebody in with the experience that Jeremy Hunt has? He's served as Health Secretary, Foreign Secretary, Culture Secretary, and that's what we've got on the Conservative benches that we've got. But that but, but not cap. but not considered good enough by Liz Truss to appoint her cabinet when she took over. But it's, it's very difficult keeping everybody happy. And I think if you look on the back benches, there's all sorts of people there who've been secretaries of state and so on. And I, I speak as a relatively new minister as well. And it's it's difficult making room for people. I and mean, you look across at the Labour Party, they, they're they having to train their front bench about how to be ministers because none of them have any experience. I think there's only two of them there, um, not even counting Keir Starmer that has that. So you do have that well, wealth of riches and experience. But the downside of that, of course, is, is it is difficult to keep everybody happy. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the pitfalls of management, I'm afraid. Well, you, you talked about Keir Starmer there. Let's just take a listen to this from Keir Starmer earlier this afternoon. But the problem, in a sense, is not any longer, you know, who said what when. The problem is they've now landed where they've got no economic policy and credibility is shot through. And that, I mean, in the end, the markets, you know, the sort of abstract thing, we all see these peculiar looking graphs. In the end, the markets are about confidence and credibility. And, and this government has absolutely shot their credibility on, on economics. And I don't think they can ever stand up before the British public again and say that we're the party of sound money. They've shot them. They've absolutely shot that to pieces. He's right, isn't he? I don't think so, Ian, because you know, we, as we've said, we, we want growth. Everybody's admitted that that's, that's what we really want to be aiming for in this country. Um, we tried to think out the box a little bit to, uh, to try and uh, push that growth forwards. And OK, it, it, it didn't work. But at the same time, you know, we, we've reverted to what we think is responsible to calm the markets, to give a bit of stability, a bit of predictability. Uh, that's what Jeremy Hunt's done straight away. Um, he said on the 31st of October he's going to be laying out more of those plans there. What I've seen from Labour really are very little in terms of plans. Um, yeah, their solution to everything is put a windfall tax on everything, um, you know, until you, you shake the tree and there's nothing left really. Uh, so well, I think well, well, they've just sorry, sat sorry, on again, their hands. Again, Jeremy Hunt has left the door open to impose another windfall tax. So yet again, another of Labour's policies that the Conservatives are going to adopt. You won't be able to tell the difference soon. But it's been done very differently. I mean, in, in terms of the, the energy guarantee, in terms of many other things, in terms of the national insurance cut, I mean, they, they couldn't make their minds up with the national insurance cut Labour Party. When we when we first brought in that extra 1.25%, they said how it was taking uh, money out of the pockets of working families. Then when we wanted to cut it, they were against that as well. And they, they can't make their minds up in. They, they try and uh, set both sides of the fence when it suits them. Well, at least, um, at least they're not, not doing U-turns. At least they're not doing U-turns on virtually every single of their flagship policies, are they? Well, I, th I think I think when you you change your mind and you're pragmatic, I think that's a sign of good leadership. I think it would not be on everything to, though. To, not on everything. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, none of us like to U-turn on things. It's great if you get things right the first time, of course. Uh, the many things that we we have done, but then at the same time, I'd say it's it's also right to admit when you're wrong. The prime minister's admitted that we've got things wrong, and you change direction. It's better than doing that by just going down the blind alley, refusing to accept you've got it wrong, and then having to deal with it later on. So. So for me, that's a sign of responsible leadership. We've brought a lot of 
other people in. I think the mood in the party is certainly improving. And I hope with the stability that's going to come with that will improve in the polls later on as well. So, how can you possibly say the mood in the party is improving when there's a poll out today that shows that 60% of Conservative members think Liz Truss should stand down? <sighs> I think the issue with that is we had a very long drawn out leadership contest. Of course, uh, members of parliament, we had to have our say on who was going to be leader, a lot of very well qualified people. Then members have had to vote on that. Um, some members of parliament would be frustrated with that. Some members would be frustrated with that, as always happens. And of course, when you have a bumpy start, um, it, it makes it very difficult. You know, we, we just removed somebody who is is very successful um, as a prime minister at the last election. We've had a pandemic. There's a war in Ukraine. Uh, all these different things going on. And, and remember, of course, all the arguments about Brexit before that. So I think it's very, very difficult to satisfy everybody all the time. Um, I think really you, you just have to give, again, give things a bit of patience, really, in over the long term. Could you explain to us why... Jeremy Hunt was meeting Sir Graham Brady five minutes before a 1922 committee meeting this afternoon. I've got no idea, to be honest, Ian, but in fairness, you know, we're all colleagues. We've all been voting this evening as well. We regularly speak to each other in the corridors and, and so on. I, I don't think we'd be doing our job if we if we didn't speak to colleagues on that. And, of course, Sir Graham, as, as head of the 1922 backbench MPs, um, you know, you, you get a feel of what backbench MPs think and we, we want to listen to our colleagues. It's important that we do that. OK, Brendan Clark-Smith, thank you very much indeed. That's uh, Brendan is Cabinet Office Minister and Conservative MP for Bassett Law.